Good day to the veterans in New Bedford and the surrounding areas and your families. We, I bring you, as you know, uh, people that are working in the fields which will give you benefits or tell you about your benefits, what you can receive and what can help you and your family so things will get better for you. We want to make sure our veterans are always ahead of the game rather than waiting for some help. So this morning we have a lady with us. Uh, I should call her a professor because she's a professor of psychology, psychologist and a professor at the University in Rhode Island. Your name is? It's um, Tracy Shea. And your full title, Tracy? Well, I'm um, a psychologist on the staff of the PTSD clinic at the Providence VA. And then I also am a professor in the Department of Psychiatry at Brown University. Um, that part of it is the research. So I do both clinical work, working with veterans, and I do research mm -hmm. on typically on post-traumatic so stress disorder. you know disorder. what we're going to talk about today is really an important item right now with yeah, our vets. Absolutely. And, um, your education, where'd you go to college to get your degrees and all that good stuff? I went to college in Boston, okay. um, and then I went to graduate school in Washington, D.C. at Catholic University, mm -hmm. and got my Ph.D. there. <clears throat> and then I went to work at the National Institute of Mental Health for about um, eight years, nine years, and then I came to Providence and went to the VA in Brown, and I've been here ever since. Mm -hmm. Now, did you uh, get the VA through Brown, or did you get Brown through the way, <laughs> it came as a package. It did. It came as a package. Very I got, um, you know, I came for a position at Brown, and then part of in the psychiatry department, mm -hmm. part of my position was to um, have a hospital appointment, and I'm that's yes. how I ended up at the VA. Which isn't so, bad at all. Not bad at all. Yeah. It's been a great, wonderful people to great meet. Great yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. Great experience. Variety, but they're good people. They're in need, and they absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, you got any veterans in your family? You know, my father was a veteran, okay. World War II, um, and outside of that, and my uncle as well, um, but no, and I, I'll tell you, um, it, that it, it, I'm actually fortunate in that sense that I came to work at the VA because I didn't know very much about the military, mm -hmm. and I didn't know very much about veterans, and I, you know, about um, the experiences veterans have, and um, now I, I feel I feel like it's been a great opportunity to understand mm -hmm. that because so many of us don't have the That's opportunity right. to understand that if you don't know a veteran, um, if you haven't been a veteran, uh, it you don't have that immediate access to really world, understanding. Yeah. yeah, they have a yeah. different camaraderie than the civilian. Yeah, and it, it's, it's a, very difficult. Yeah, sometimes. absolutely. Yeah. But it's so, a learning experience too. It's a real learning experience. Mm -hmm. It's really yeah. opened my eyes to a lot of yeah. things. And how do the families get involved with a veteran that through you? Is there any way they... Well, typically, um, it's, it's, uh, it, can, it can happen in different ways. And sometimes it might be the parents that initiate the contact and try to get, for example, if they have you know a son or daughter who's having difficulty, they may try to get them into treatment. Um, sometimes... Uh, we work with people who come in for treatment, and then there might be a marital issue going on, so we want to have the spouse come in. Mm -hmm. We might refer them for marital therapy, provide them with marital therapy, um, and or the kids mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, the children suffer. Yeah. It, the children really can. Yeah, yeah they can take be the difficult. blame for things that have nothing to do with them. It's the two adults that have got the problems. Yeah, well, it's yeah. tough. It's a lot of stress. It's mm -hmm. a lot of stress for, I mean, you know, you hear a lot about that these days about, you know, when there are these repeated deployments. Mm -hmm. um, that creates stress at home because you have one less person who's mm -hmm. there, um, you know, helping. And doing. there's no guarantee that it's going to improve. It could get worse in the sense that they're gone. Well, you, know, you don't know. So many tragedies, you know. Yeah, you just don't yeah. know. And there's that fear right. and worry and, you know, mm -hmm. and that's it's, it's hard for kids to have a parent that's gone for of a course. year. Especially if it's both of them. I don't yes. like the idea that they both get deployed yeah. at the same time. And that, that's, you know, I mean. Because that's, then it's grandparents or other family members that take care of those children and they're yeah. lost. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's lost, a real, yeah. you know, and people say this often, but it's a real sacrifice that, um, the real sacrifice that they make, mm -hmm. the families as well as the mm -hmm. veterans themselves. If the father's going overseas, the mother should at least be stationed, say, right, so she's close at the home to the yeah. children. Yeah, and that's, see it. that's a relatively new phenomenon, isn't yeah. it? I mean, yeah. it didn't used to happen so often that Not you'd have when two I parents. Was in, no. Yeah, it would, that you'd have two parents. I mean, at 18, I couldn't go overseas. I had to be 21. And I went in at 18, so you know I had to stay stateside. Yeah. 
Yeah. My duty was stateside. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's big and a big change. A lot of things I see I'm not too happy with. It's uh, hmm. the wrong people are probably asked if it would be a good idea for this or a good idea for that. And the majority are not women, and yet now it's affecting more women than it ever. It is absolutely affecting and more women. And you've got to have that input from the woman veteran uh, yes. so that yes. they'll know how it affects her and her family or her yes. duties or whatever she's going to have to yeah. do. Yeah, and why, I think we're learning more yeah. and more about yeah. that. She's oh, willing. It's not that she can't. I yeah. always tell them, it's not that you can't. It's just that certain things... Yeah. Wherever we think things differently sometimes than the men yeah. do, you know. It's true. Yeah, yeah. it's not different that we're smart or anything else. It's just that different. We're a different caliber yep. as person. Absolutely. You know? So let's get to PTSD. Uh, what are the symptoms of it, and uh, okay, what does it mean actually? Yeah. Well, PTSD stands for post traumatic stress disorder, and it's um, it's an anxiety disorder that some people develop after experiencing a severe <clears throat> trauma. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what is a trauma? It's typically we think of it as um, experiencing or witnessing a life threatening event. Mm -hmm. So, um, certainly exposure to death, severe injury, being at risk for that oneself um, would all qualify as trauma. See, we also have traumas in the civilian world too, um, uh, including, you know, accidents, serious accidents, mm -hmm. natural disasters, and so forth. <clears throat> and then, of course, you mentioned. Um, the other issue is not just for, um, in terms of veterans, it's not only combat that is f filled with potential traumatic experiences, but also there's sexual trauma that happens mm -hmm. in the military as well. Um, as uh, for men as well as women. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another kind of traumatic event um, that you know, we'll, we'll see from people who have served in the military as well as in the civilian mm -hmm. world. It does so. affect the civilians too. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So because there's yes, a lot absolutely. of people in the homes today. Yeah. And uh, everyone's trying, but it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the children are the ones that are affected by it. Well, they certainly, they certainly can be. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, you know, some of the symptoms, you asked about the symptoms, and um, just sort of a brief overview, there are different categories of symptoms for PTSD. There are what we call re-experiencing symptoms. That's kind of a reliving, mm -hmm. and that's when the um, experiences, the memories come back, um, either in the form of nightmares, it might be in intrusive thoughts, that's where someone can get very, very vivid images, memories of the trauma, mm -hmm. um, have difficulty getting them out of their mind. Um, it could flashbacks where someone might lose a sense of where they are, they're triggered and they think they're back there. Mm -hmm. um, being triggered by reminders of the trauma um, and experiencing distress um, associated with that. Then there are symptoms of hyperarousal, which um, <clears throat> that's feeling um, constantly on edge, having to be on guard, mm -hmm. uh, having to be vigilant, feeling like you can't relax. It could be danger lurking everywhere, yeah. essentially. And then also with echo sleep difficulties sometimes, um, anger and irritability, being jumpy, having trouble concentrating. So that's another host of symptoms. Um, with PTSD. And of course, the anger irritability that can come out um, often, veterans will talk about being very short fused. Mm -hmm. um, their threshold for being triggered, becoming angry is just much lower, mm -hmm. probably because of the hyper arousal. And so that can be difficult for kids or the family because there can be this kind of like, you know, short fuse, mm -hmm. you know, um, angry responses. We used to call it patience. We don't have too much of it sometimes. Yeah, the patience. Yeah, the yeah. patience. Yeah, and, and that's... Dad comes home for a, off tour for a week or so, and he's already wound up. Yeah. And this is a new environment for him to come back into with yes. three or four children yelling yeah. and running around. Yeah. It's bound to do some... It's hard. Yeah. It, that can really be hard. Mm. Yeah. And yet they want to be home. But um, they get to the point they don't know how to handle it either. It's, it's such a transition. Mm. It's, it's it, you know, I've really come to appreciate that working particularly now with um, seeing veterans more recently after mm -hmm. serving in a war zone. I mean, I've worked with Vietnam veterans for years, so I've heard about their experiences. And they had some more They friends. had a huge, um, uh, for a whole host of different reasons, issues. And it was a different type of war. <clears throat> they yeah. were really more in field, all, always in the... God knows In where, the jungle. Yeah. Yeah, somebody, that's somebody, the word I guess you'd call it. Somebody yeah. that I work with recently said that, uh, somebody I see at the VA said, um, 
you know, they they were in the jungle and we were on the street. So mm -hmm. it, you know, sort of the environment was, mm -hmm. was quite different. Um, so, yeah, but the transition can really be challenging coming back. And, <clears throat> you know, when you really stop and think about it, um, for one, if somebody's gone for a long time out of the household, that in and of itself mm -hmm. can create some stress about coming back because awesome. people, you know, lives go on and um, the spouse is making decisions about the kids, she's about the money. She's changing too. Yeah. She's changing too. She's mm -hmm. handling all that. So then <clears throat> the veteran comes back and has to kind of reintegrate into that. But then there are also some things that are more specific to um, coming back from a war zone, <clears throat> excuse me, that I think can make, I'm going to take a little sip of water here. Yeah, uh, well, the thing is, uh, the war zone is a trigger <coughs> to everything for these people because of a whole different lifestyle. Yes, yeah. And so you spend, you know, six months, a year, 13 months, what have you, in that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are just a lot of things about it. For mm -hmm. one, um, depending on the person's experiences, but, you know, many are exposed to some pretty horrific stuff and they see a lot of suffering. You know, they're exposed to a lot of um, really tough stuff. And then they come back here and uh, it, it, it may feel that other people just can't understand that. Mm -hmm. You know, they- And many don't. And many don't. And the truth is, you, you know, we really can't fully understand That's it right. if we haven't experienced mm -hmm. that. And so that for some people, can result in this sense of disconnection, detachment, just having a hard time relating to people. Mm -hmm. There's also, you know, this I found very interesting that um, despite all the challenges of being in um, combat or war zone, there is typically a, an intensity about it. Mm -hmm. There's um, a sense of mission. There's mm -hmm. a sense of purpose. Um, it's really intense. And so then when they come back, some of them, it's like regular life in the civilian world feels pretty it's trivial. It's a letdown. It's a it downgrade. Is a letdown. Yeah. It feels trivial. Yeah. It feels like, what, you know. What do you do to help with these symptoms? I mean, when you have the young man or woman yeah. come in. Well, that gets into the whole question about treatments mm -hmm. that are available for PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, there we offer um, both treatment with psychotherapy, which is that talk therapy, mm -hmm. essentially, right? And then also medication. Well, are they um, always will willing to talk, though? Or do you have a difficult time getting to them to open up? Well, you know, I think there's a lot of resistance for many about coming in mm -hmm. um, to treatment. And, um, you know, there, I think there's a whole host of things that goes with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the stigma. That's right. There's the military culture. There's a male culture, too, mm -hmm. about, you know, being strong mm -hmm. and... Um, the macho man. Yeah, yeah. and not They are as a military person, but then they yeah. have to step back. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's just a, it's a real um, sort of shift to say that, you know, uh, I'm really struggling with this stuff, and mm -hmm. I think I need to go talk to somebody. Yeah. Typically, I think, not always, but often when people come in, if they can get hooked up with someone that they feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. that changes. Mm -hmm. And they find that um, they really can mm -hmm. talk and, and get some benefit yeah. from talking about and this you, stuff. you let them open up the door. You're, you're there, but you let them start the... Well, what we do, if someone comes, say, you know, calls the VA, comes for treatment, the first thing that will happen is they'll have an evaluation. Mm -hmm. So that means sitting with someone typically for about 90 minutes or so. Um, it'll be a psychologist or social worker or a, a clinician um, trained in mental health symptoms and ask a lot of questions about what the experiences were, what the symptoms are, what they're struggling with, what mm. they need help with. And the results of that assessment will point to different kinds of treatments mm -hmm. that are available because mm -hmm. you you know, you have to get a sense about what is the, the, the most pressing issues, um, what else is going on. Mm. So for example, sometimes people as a way of coping with some of the symptoms will um, start abusing alcohol or drugs because that's the way they're coping. So you need to know that because mm -hmm. that needs to be part of the treatment if that's the case. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, in addition to having the symptoms of PTSD, have depression, um, other anxiety disorders. So we ask about all those questions and then we'll sit with the veteran afterwards, and like typically in a follow-up session and talk about what treatments are available. So we try to make it collaborative. It's not just like we say, this is the treatment you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. We say, these are what some of the options are. And 
you know, get their feedback about what they think mm -hmm. makes sense for Where them. Where they want to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, we have, there are now um, some treatments that have received a fair amount of research and been shown to be effective. And um, they're t mostly co what we call cognitive behavioral treatments. Mm -hmm. So the cognitive part is working on the, some of the thoughts that sometimes develop around trauma that might be inaccurate and also create a sense of stress and can create depression. Often people end up blaming themselves for something that happened, even if objectively, mm -hmm. there's really and truly nothing that's else they could have done. That's where trouble really can come in. Yeah, but they feel they can feel mm -hmm. that guilt. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's an example of the kind of, you know, really learning to identify those thoughts and, um, and sort of challenge them and question them. There's another kind of therapy that is called, it uses exposure. And exposure is essentially about um, confronting the memories and, and confronting the things that the person's been avoiding, because that's another symptom of PTSD, avoidance. I mean, you understandably want to avoid mm -hmm. the memories. You want to avoid things that are going to remind you of the memories. And that's dangerous to lock it out that it, way. It, well, that's, yeah, that it's creates problems. It's got to problems. come and get out of this stupid company. Yeah, and, you know, it's really it terrible. interesting how you start to notice that this is changing, I think, but our culture um, can reinforce that. Like, that was a long time ago. Forget about it, you mm -hmm. know? Just try to that put it away of, yeah. you and can go live on. With that, pass it, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's kind of also embedded in our culture. So mm -hmm. that, the exposure-based therapies, very systematically, but in a way that the veteran can feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. yeah, not to say it's easy. Oh, it's no. never easy, but um, we'll, you know, uh, confront, go back and, and talk about the trauma repeatedly, mm -hmm. uh, start confronting things, and over time, um, the, uh, hopefully the anxiety diminishes, and so mm -hmm. it's not something that has to be avoided so much. Now, how soon do you bring in their spouse or other family members so they can start to understand better rather than aggravate the situation? Yeah, that's an interesting question, and um, I typically, and I think most of us do, uh, try to encourage a visit with the spouse. Um, we don't always do that, though, and I think there's sometimes that we should probably well, do that more. Some aloneers anyway, aren't they? They're, they're alone. They don't yeah. have too many people. Yeah, not anyway. everybody has a spouse. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a good idea. Sometimes the spouses are not, you know, may not be willing or they're working and it's hard for them to get in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a good thing, too, is I think at the Vet Center in Warwick, there is a group mm -hmm. for family members to um, learn about PTSD oh, and to be able to talk about some of the issues that mm -hmm. they're struggling with. So that can be a beneficial thing for... Can make or break a marriage. Absolutely. By the time, you know, they get themselves more stabilized. Yep. Uh, it must be really rough. It's, it, it is really, yeah, it can really pose some challenges. Yeah, um, yeah. So. Uh, we have the v Veterans Transition House here in New Bedford. Uh -huh. And they spend two years there. They come off the street as long they have rules, and yep. of course, it's no alcohol, no drugs. Yeah. If they got medical drugs, it, it's, there's, it's known, and it's uh, held for their time that they have to take okay. them. They go get them. Yep. Yep. Uh, they've done a wonderful job with oh, a lot of them. That's great. And they, that's great. it holds about 60, I think close to 60, 65 beds. Huh. And uh, then they graduate. Uh, After two years, they're great. allowed to start going out. And yeah. they have a van that takes them down to Otis when I was helping out there. Yeah. That's how I found out these things. Yeah. And they take them down in the morning. They'd brown bag it. Yeah. And then work till 4 o'clock, come back to yeah. their room, wherever they were there. Uh -huh. And took another two years. Then they go to the graduate house. By then, they can work in there with their own apartment. They don't have to check in. they got to oh, take care of themselves. that's fantastic. And it's working gradually, you know. That's, and they've been going great. on for quite a while. That's really fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Some of those men, I'm quite sure, had PTS. Yeah. And no one knew it at the time Absolutely. they came back. Yeah. Because we've seen them on street corners, and we've picked them up and tried to get them into the house yeah. for their safety as well as the degradation of being out oh, begging it, with a card. No veteran should be doing that. You yeah. Know? Uh, you know, so the city has done very well that in is, that sense. They, that's they've really tried great. very hard. That's great. But with Providence so close, they can go and they'll have the van to take them if it's necessary. Yep. And they do get everything some they get some medical treatment them. or whatever. They try to have a home for the women. They had a, they got a house uh -huh. and um, they had a beds of 10. But the women are hard to come in. 
Yeah. They must have had, had three, they'd had five, then they'd okay. have two, and then, they, yeah. and then they'd have that problem. They couldn't agree with each other, and the next thing you know. Yeah. So that, that they're using well. other facilities for them now, you know, yeah. or referring them to other places. So. Uh, well, you know, that reminds me of, um, to mention that also, that something the VA has more recently embarked on is really addressing the homeless issue for veterans. Mm -hmm. So there's um, at many VAs, including our VA in Providence, um, there's a program um, for the homeless to, to get them in and get medical treatment mm -hmm. and then to help them um, find housing and get into programs and so forth. So there's, you know, again, there's more recognition of um, some of these, you know, really pretty serious consequences that veterans mm -hmm. suffer, mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, you know, now, does PTSD relate to any other kind of medical problems? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, there's research that shows that um, PTSD increases risk for um, high blood pressure, heart disease, things like that. So it really can affect the immune system mm -hmm. as well and affect health. So that's another reason why it's important to get mm -hmm. treatment because it really um, does pose some risks for health. Mm -hmm. Um, we've talked about the family member helping out. Is mm -hmm. there anything specific they can do that you could the advise these people that are? Sure. Yeah, and it's, again, we talked about this, it's hard for the family members. And one, one thing um, I would say is to, well, first of all, learn as much as you can about PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, because the more you understand about it, the more you're going to understand your, um, your veterans, mm -hmm. whether spouse, son, what have you, father, um, it, it, understand what's going on with them. So that's one thing. A second thing is that when somebody's maybe snapping at you or they've become withdrawn, aloof, um, it's really hard not to take it personally, mm -hmm. but don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. And that's why understanding what PTSD is mm -hmm. so helpful because do they it's, become violent though through PTSD? Um, they may it, it, act out. It, it, know, that happens. Aggressively. It, it can. It can. I mean, it's not the norm, but with those symptoms of hyperarousal that I that we were talking about before, mm -hmm. you know, not sleeping, being on edge, being irritable, um, it it can under certain conditions result in mm -hmm. violence. You see, they lived in under violence. Yeah. It's so hard to back away from that and yeah. know that civilian life is not made that way. That's yes. strictly for a military situation. That's a really an important yeah, point yeah. because there, you know, you're trained to respond with aggression. Um, you, ha you know, that's the norm. That's how you survive. That's how you mm -hmm. are an effective soldier. And yeah, making that's a really important part of the transition it's coming back. It's tough enough on a couple of children when the father and mother are not agreeing in civilian life and they start to feel it's their fault that they did something yeah, wrong, yeah. and that's why the family's not making it. You know? Yeah, the kids and need So when you've got support. this other situation of the military coming in, uh -huh. he's a whole different person. Yes. He's had yes. a different life, and you've had a different life, and now you've got to put them you've back together. You've got to put it back together again, and yeah. it's challenging. Mm -hmm. It's really challenging. Yeah. You have a question here about reintegration. What is that in the sense of... Yeah, situation. and that's related to, to some of these things you were mentioning. Um, I mean, essentially, I think of it as making that transition from the war zone back to civilian life. Um, so it's, if somebody's, re a successful reintegration would mean being able to get back into, you know, the roles that you had before. So, for example, being a husband, a wife, parent, friend, um, employee, um, member of the community. Mm -hmm. So that's ideal to be able to get back into mm -hmm. um, where one was before. And as we talked about, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of challenges to that. Um, it's, um, it's making an adjustment from uh, a, a very different world back to the civilian that's world. That's and it's, it's a challenge. It's a world in its own. And yeah. the comradeship is so different from civilian that's another thing. Friends and things like that. That is another thing, yeah. yeah. That, that sometimes, and if they see uh, one of their buddies or friends get hurt or die yes. as, right next to them, yeah. that must be a terrible thing to live with yeah, and be able to put hard. it in the right place. Yeah. It's bound to hurt. You yeah. know? Um, uh, the um, idea that uh, the young people of today going into the military, should they be prepared for something like this? This. You know, is there a stigma with it going, if they do come back and they want help, 
is there a stigma for when they want a job down the road or? Well, I think that's really changed. I yeah, think our Vietnam veterans suffered from that enormously, but I think that's did. changed. Yeah. And that's the good news about learning more about PTSD and people being more aware of it. So I don't think, I don't think there's typically that stigma present as much today. Maybe it's still there, but I don't think it's. It as may be in the families rather than on, all yeah. rounded on the outside. Yeah. People understand a little better outside. Yeah. Well, and the other thing I should emphasize too, you know, because I work in the PTSD clinic and I see people with PTSD, I have to remind myself that um, not everybody's going to come back having these problems. No, I think no. it's. I think the transition's a challenge for pretty much everybody. Yeah, I, sure. It would be hard to imagine that it's not. But not, you know, some people are able to move through it and get back into their lives mm -hmm. successfully. So it's not everybody who has these problems. But mm -hmm. should they be prepared? Yeah, I think so. And I think there's real effort in the military to start doing more of that, to prepare people up front for some of the things they might encounter mm -hmm. and trying to prepare them up front for um, some strategies for coping mm -hmm. with this. And again, you know, it's a kind of knowledge that maybe can help prevent some of the consequences. Mm -hmm. um, probably not all, but you know, maybe helpful for mm -hmm. some. Now, uh, if they want to go to school, even though they're having treatment, is that eligible for yeah. them? They can yep. still do that another yeah. phase to help them come out of this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, there are benefits that are available to provide, you know, to go back to school and get education, get mm -hmm. retraining if, if that's what somebody desires. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly, you know, when they're in treatment, a lot of our um, veterans are working, have families, and or going to school. Um, so there's a whole range. Mm -hmm. So people are living their lives, but, you know, they're getting treatment to help them be able to maintain their lives, improve their lives, and that so that can, uh, you know, affect their job and everything else. Yeah. And they could lose the job. That'll make them in another set of depression. Yes, you know, yes, to yes. be rejected for that. That's right. So, yeah, yeah and it, that can end up in this kind of downward spiral. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, it's so important to get in there early. We have learned a lot about post-traumatic stress disorder over the last several decades. And mm -hmm. so we have a lot more to learn, but there are treatments that are available now. There's increasing recognition. Um, so hopefully over time, I think some of the, the stigma and the fear about PTSD will start to decrease and we're gonna continue learning more. So there's, you know, there's hope out there. So. Well, thank you very much for coming, Tracy. Certainly. And uh, we'll have you in down the road again so okay. that you have shown new improvements and new things that they're using. Yeah, yeah, thank, pleasure. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nubeth, for joining us on our next program. Your choice to recycle can affect more people than you think. Yay. Call Marissa at 508-979-1493 to request your free recycling bins. This message was brought to you by the City of New Bedford and UMass Dartmouth Charlton School of Business.